In this video, we're going to go over the derivation of the weak form. So in the finite element method, we're going to seek an approximate solution to the governing ODE over each element. So a polynomial approximation of the solution within an element would be of the form. So our approximate solution is equal to the sum of our value at a node times our interpolation function. So the necessary and sufficient number of algebraic relationships among our values at our function are attained by rewriting the differential equation in the weighted residual form as zero is equal to the integral from xa to xb of some weight function times our differential equation, which is d dx of a du dx plus cu minus f dx. And this is actually step one, because we're going to multiply by the weight function and integrate. For each u, an independent choice of our weight function we can get an independent algebraic equation that relates all of the values of our function at the endpoints of our elements. So what we're going to do is we want to weaken the continuity required by the function psi j and trade differentiation in our above equation from u to w, so both u and w are differentiated equally. And the resulting integral is called the weighted residual, sorry, it's called the weak form. So the trade integration between those, we're going to do integration by parts, and that's step two. So zero is equal, here's our original equation, it's the integral from xa to xb of w minus d dx a du dx plus cu minus f dx. So we're going to use integration by parts. on this term. And as a reminder, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So what we're going to do is we're going to set u equal to w. I'm going to set dv equal to a, sorry, to d dx of a du dx, which means that v is equal to a du dx, and du is equal to dw. So I'm going to get 0 is equal to the integral from xa to xb of a du dx dw dx. There's my integration by parts. This is my v du from integration by parts. I still have my CWU minus WF from the original part of my equation, DX minus WA DU DX evaluated at XA and XB. And this is my UV term for my integration by parts. 
So I want to expand the last term. So I saw the integral from xa to xb of a du dx dw dx plus cwu minus wf dx. And I'm going to have minus w a du dx evaluated x equals xb minus w a du dx evaluated x equals x a. And this is our boundary term. So the third step is to identify the primary and secondary variables of our weak form. So to do this, we need to classify the boundary conditions for each differential equation into essential or geometric and natural or force boundary conditions. The classification is made by isolating and examining our boundary terms. So in our case, our boundary term was minus w a du dx from x a to x b. As a general rule, the coefficient of the weight function in the boundary term expression is called the secondary variable, and its specification is of a natural or Newman boundary condition, so those are forces. And the dependent variable, the dependent unknown u, in the same form as the weight function that appears in the boundary term, is the primary variable, and its specification is an essential or Dirichlet boundary condition. So in our example, and we, the weight function w appears as w, which is a zero derivative. So our primary variable takes the same form. So our primary variable is going to be u. Because in our differential equation, u was our dependent variable. Our secondary variable is the coefficient of the weight function in terms of magnitude. So we're going to give that the variable q. We're going to say it's a du dx. Sorry, I kind of wrote that in the middle. Move this to where it belongs. Okay. So at the endpoints of our nodes, so the endpoints nodes 1 and 2 are A and B of a line element, we have four conditions we have to satisfy. So we have u of xA is equal to u1. We have u of xB is equal to u2. We have q at end 1 is minus a du dx at x equals xa and we have qe2 is equal to a du dx at x equals xb so we're going to end up choosing our function such that it is automatically satisfies the boundary conditions of u of xa is equal to u1 and u of xb is equal to u2. 
So we have to include our remaining two conditions, which were that Q1 is equal to minus A du dx at x equals xA, and QE2 is A du dx at x equals xB. This minus sign becomes important. So our weak form becomes 0 is equal to the integral from xA to xB of A du dx dw dx plus C w u minus w f dx minus w of x a times q1 minus w of x b times q2. This is our weak form solution. To get a better understanding of how we develop the weak form, we're going to look at an example, which is the Euler beam example. Um, so the differential equation that governs the Euler beam equation is d squared dx squared b of x d squared z dx squared plus cfz minus q of x is equal to zero. So this is a fourth order polynomial, which means we would require a fourth order solution. So step one is to multiply by our weight function and integrate. So we're going to get zero is equal to the integral from xA to xB of w of x times d squared dx squared b of x d squared z dx squared plus cfz minus q of x So step two is to use integration by parts. So I'm going to set u equal to w, which means du is equal to dw. We set dv is equal to d dx of d dx b of x d squared z dx squared. So v is d dx b of x d squared z dx squared. I'm going to substitute everything in and we are going to get 0 is equal to minus the integral from xA to xB of dw dx du dx sorry, dw dx d dx of b of x d squared z dx squared plus WCFZ minus Q of X times W DX plus W DDX B of X D squared Z dx squared evaluated from xb and xa. So this is our first boundary term.
Now, the whole point of this is to make sure W and Z are differentiated the same amount of times in each term, which this term's good, this term's good, this term is still bad. So we have to use integration by parts again. This time we're going to set u equal to t dw dx. So du is d squared w dx squared. I'm going to set dv equal to d dx of b of x d squared z dx squared. So v is just b of x d squared z dx squared. So this time, just for the integration by parts terms, we're going to get minus, minus the integral from xa to xb of b of x d squared z dx squared d squared w dx squared dx plus dw dx b of x d squared z dx squared evaluated from xa to xb and we also have our first boundary term So the full weighted rigid, the full weighted integral is the integral from xa to xb of b of x d squared w dx squared d squared z dx squared plus w cfz minus qw dx plus w dx b of x d squared z dx squared from xb to xa minus b of x dw dx d squared z dx squared from xa to xb and all of this is equal to zero. So we have our weighted integral statements. Now we're going to evaluate our boundary term. So our first boundary term We have w dx of b of x d squared z dx squared. So the primary variable is z because our weight function appears as a zero derivative and our secondary is the coefficient, so it's d dx b of x d squared z dx squared. And in terms of our problem, this is our deflection and this is our shear force. So we have our second boundary term it's dw 
dx and b of x d squared z dx squared. So our primary, this time our weight function shows up as a first derivative. So our primary in this case is dz dx, which is our slope. And our secondary, again, is the coefficient, which is b of x d squared z dx squared. And this is our bending moment. So why did we do all this? Why did I sit here and explain all of this math and do all this work? So let's look at our original problem statement. We had d squared dx squared of b of x d squared z dx squared plus cf z minus q of x is equal to zero. Our our dependent variable was z. Our independent variable was x, and this was a fourth order diffy q. So since it was a fourth order diffy q, z of x had to be a fourth order poly. So it had to be ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. And z of x had to satisfy four boundary conditions. That's sort of a pain, but if we look at our weak form, we have b of x, d squared w, dx squared, d squared z, dx squared, plus w, z, cf minus w, q of x, equals zero, which is only a second order. So z of x only has to be a second order polynomial and only has to satisfy two essential boundary conditions because the natural ones are taken care of by our boundary terms. So we've shifted the weight from z to w, which allows us to approximate a lower order solution and makes our lives simpler because it doesn't have to satisfy as many boundary conditions. Next, we're going to look at actually how do we assume the approximate forms of our solutions.